Just on the side. No. Okay, hello. I'm Michael Marsh, and uh, welcome to the program dedicated to reestablishing the constitutional government that we once had, first in Oregon and then in the United States. But in order to have a constitutional government, you need people in office that will uphold the Constitution. And so between now and February, I will be presenting to you different people that are candidates for office that I think will do the job of upholding our Constitution. And I believe that the United States and Oregon would both be better off if the respective constitutions were obeyed. Uh, today with me is Raymond Baldwin, who is a candidate for the 5th Congressional District on the Constitution Party. And uh, we're going to talk about what we need to do to get our country back. Uh, first thing I think we need to do is impeach Barack Obama. You object to that? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, probably first thing I should let the, vo v the viewers know is that these are all spontaneous questions. These are all spontaneous <laughs> answers. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, it, 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 there's there's two forms of impeaching. As we know, we impeached uh, President Clinton, but it, he still maintains his office. So there's two kinds of impeachments, impeachments for that and impeachments for replacing out of office. Uh, definitely, he should have been impeached already uh, at least a dozen times. And uh, why, why they haven't, I do not know. Uh, I would vote to definitely impeach him on a number of issues. Okay, uh, starting with, um, okay, his main job is to uphold the Constitution of the United States. We have a amendment, the First Amendment says that we have the right to speak out our belief, political mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. belief. We have a right to our religious beliefs mm -hmm. to Absolutely. exercise them as individuals. And that we have the right to uh, gather together with our to fellow assemble. citizens and petition the government for redress of grievance. Okay, do you believe Barack Obama and the government in general have been, are allowing freedom of speech? I mean, we do have this program, but they also have the NSA spying on us <laughs> at 100% of the time. Okay, well, uh, freedom of speech. Now, let's take, for example, Benghazi. Benghazi was a situation where they were selling guns to Al-Qaeda and they were going to be caught on that. So they put up a scapegoat, uh, this guy who made an Islamic film, uh, the film of which we've never seen, and the individual is still incarcerated. So is he upholding our First Amendment rights? No, he's not. Is he upholding the First Amendment rights of American citizens abroad? No, he's not. For example, um, there was this gal and her husband who just recently, I can't tell you which country it was, but she's been in chains for months as a mother, as, as, as a pregnant woman. Yeah, and even had. after having the baby, she's still in chains. And she has to uh, announce her freedom of speech, her freedom of religion, and declare herself Muslim or be killed. Uh, I don't, and there's an American citizen. I don't think that's upholding the rights of American citizens. It's certainly not upholding the Constitution. It's certainly not upholding uh, our right to freedom of speech. And um, that and also conscience. brings up, yeah, the religious uh, exercise, which is also part of that First Amendment. Um, as you mentioned, the lady in Sudan who refuses to denounce her Muslim. Faith. Or okay. Now well, let's expound upon that a little bit. Yeah. You know, you've got uh, what's this new law that uh, people can't say anything bad about Islam because uh, Barack Obama finds that offensive. Yeah. So what? But yet, you know, he can go ahead and uh, enact whatever uh, government program he wants or executive order that he wants, uh, regardless of whatever Congress wants. Establishing czars instead of, uh, a, you know, appointed officials that can be uh, 
approved by Congress. You know, he oversteps his boundaries in, in all kinds of ways and has been since the beginning. Um, Changing America fundamentally. Well, that was his goal and what he's doing. Should the agencies, okay, you know, he wants, he gave a speech not too long ago saying he has, if Congress doesn't do what he wants, he's got a pen and telephone. Uh, Congress has been allowing Obama to do just pretty much whatever he wants. If you're elected to take, uh, Kurt, that partly because Kurt Schrader supports his agenda. He, yes, he is a progressive, and and he brags about the fact that he is a progressive. Okay, but uh, but what's come out in the in the polls is that uh, most of the American people are not trusting either the Democrats or the Republicans. They find it to be the same party. In many cases, that's true because even though they're a Democrat or Republican, they're a progressive, <laughs> and the progressive trumps their whatever party that they're in. So uh, we get this undertow that has managed to creep into Congress over a period of time, saying, well, we're progressive, and you know, Woodrow Wilson was progressive. That's why we have income tax. Uh, so we have, to, we have to safeguard ourselves from who we have as candidates. I mean, and I admit that I'm not, uh, I'm not Cambridge material, mm -hmm. but uh, I may be now, but I didn't go there. Um, but I know what it's like to work and feed a family for 40 years and raise those children, or what kind of lifestyle we have here, what they're going through, and what the people are being, how we're being herded like cattle, and how we're being uh, uh, object, subjected to uh, the system that we have that gleans everything from us, you know, whether it's the electric or the insurance or the mortgage payment or whatever. Uh, it's all controlled by the bankers and yeah. the credit industry. So we've got to free up the American people. Um, and right now, freedom of speech is not a high priority on Obama's list. Or religious freedom. Uh, there's a couple of cases in front of the U.S. Supreme Court right now where the company owned by Christians and they don't feel they should have to uh, pay for insurance that provides abortion. And one of them is actually a, a Catholic charity and the other is a private industry company. Should the government have the power to tell people, first off, should they be able to tell people they have to buy what kind of insurance they have to buy in the first place? No. And then secondly, uh, should they be able to say, you can't, you, you can't make your decisions based on your religion. You have to base your decisions on what government wants. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, that takes away your freedom of thought, freedom of choice, takes away your sovereign rights, your rights uh, as a, a person born in America or sovereign. You're uh, above the, the courts. You're above the government because the Constitution protects you from the government. That's its purpose. Um, unfortunately, you know, there's, there's so many people that are, uh, uh, our whole country has been run down this, um, like stampeded down to get us all to uh, buy everything that we can, get into debt, um, you know, instead of, uh, distributing the wealth evenly, the, the wealth, uh, which is what communists say, well, let's just spread it evenly. What's happened is, is that so much money has gone to the top, there's not enough trickle down, the middle class has dissolved and gone into the lower class, and so what this country needs is it needs some super low interest, interest rates for, for housing, to get the housing industry going, uh, we need to get uh, well, if we abolish the 16th Amendment, which is income tax, require the stock market, uh, Wall Street, and all of the government bonds and, and, and municipals, and everybody pays a 2% tax, that will pay down our national debt to the point where we can stop taxing people 
for federal income tax and get rid of the 16th Amendment, put that burden back on commerce. Now we've got businesses in this country, this is the only country in the world you can go in and buy a piece of property if you're from another country. Yeah. I can't go to Mexico and get me some property. I can't no. go to Sudan and get me some property. I can't, no, can't do it. Okay, why are we allowing it to be done? Why does Great Britain uh, have such a great stock in America? <laughs> Okay, they own um, China massive. and Russia. <laughs> well, yeah, all these, and they're not, and they're not paying their fair share. They're coming here and getting the benefits, but they're not paying their fair share. So I say, let's tax them at that level. Let's tax the success at the success level, and pass that on to the rest of us. After all, they're using the natural resources. They're using the, the United States government, and and we all contribute into this system, and we all should get a benefit out of this system. Um, <clears throat> I don't agree with the present system of distributing, redistributing the wealth because it's not sufficient. It's only, uh, it's only enough to, it's not enough to actually help, it's enough to keep people on the dole, yeah. keep them forced on that because, because they have to be there, not because they want to be there, and it's not enough to get them off. And then we have all these other programs that are supposed to get them off and everything. But uh, they half the time don't work. And the reason they half the time don't work is because the, the people that are doing them don't work. They don't work <laughs> with the people. So, um, but next subject. Um, um, one, well, speaking of the uh, IRS, the 16th Amendment gets rid of it. It's, from the beginning, just about it's been misused. You know, they, the international bankers, which is what really who does the collecting. The IRS is really a collection agency. It's not a federal tax organization. But they attack small businesses and family businesses mm -hmm. and steal everything they have. And now they're using it for political opponents. It, it, you know, finding out, you know, if you don't agree with the Democratic agenda, then they try to, you know, destroy you. Um, that's another reason why we've got to get rid of the 16th Amendment, <laughs> abolish that, right. and you know, get rid of the IRS. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of the economy, you know, like President Obama making this speech recently about $15 a, an hour wages. Should the federal government be setting a one-size-fits-all uh, minimum wage at all? You know, I know Congress has passed minimum mm -hmm. wage, well, but should they, or should that be repealed? Yeah. Well, what you got to understand about Obama is he's been campaigning since he went into office, and uh, if he would stop campaigning and become president, <laughs> I would really be uh, pleased to see him take a leadership role in that job. But frankly, he hasn't done that. He's constantly campaigned, giving people false truths, and uh, you know, laying out a, 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 an agenda of falsehood, saying one thing and doing another. So, um, yeah, I, I, I have a real problem with that, and uh, that's just one, one of the other reasons that he needs to be impeached. Uh, we can't get any truth on anything. Um, there's so many reasons why he should be impeached that you couldn't handle them all in half an hour. <laughs> um, but as far as the IRS uh, targeting the Tea Party, obviously that's fascism. It's a form of fascism, using economics to, to beat your opponents down. Um, to me, of course, the, if there isn't laws against it, there should be, and I'd certainly support any law that would make that a crime. Um, Unfortunately, our, as you know, if you sue a government agency, uh, let's say you sue the state of Oregon, which I'm presently doing, uh, that the attorney general's office is the one that protects that state agency. Yeah. So if you're going after corruption, you're going after the attorney <laughs> general of the state of Oregon. Uh, that's kind of the way it is in the same way with the federal government. So if you're going after some, uh, a government agency that's breaking the law, they're going to be defended by the Attorney General. Yeah. Um, how they can get away with running guns to Al-Qaeda and running guns to um, 
the gun cartels or the, the drug cartels. Um, you know, this this is last weekend. They're they're dumping children. They've got an epidemic of incoming children at the border. Yeah. They're just rampantly taking them over. Everything's oversized. They're, they're um, somebody's orchestrating the influx. Yeah. Otherwise, there wouldn't there would be a consistent flow instead of all of a sudden this big influx. So, if you think that all this stuff's just happening happenstance, well, you know, it's you got your head in the sand. It's just more of the same. Yeah. It's like a song my brother wrote. More of the same, just a different disguise. Looking through the truth, through all the lies. Meet the new boss. He's the same as the old, a little more callous, crafty, and cold. <laughs> The classic signs come from way back when, but it looks like we got fooled again. No reason to point fingers at someone to blame. It's our own fault. It's more of the same. So the voters keep coming up with more of the same because they're marketed this crap through the marketing and through the money, and they buy it. And yeah. say, okay, well, this, I, I seen a couple advertisements on this guy. He looks good. I think I'll vote for him. Well, the Democrat, you know, there are a few Republicans that I'll support. Uh, I haven't found any Democrats that I'm willing to support. Uh, but the parties as a rule, I mean, the Democrat and Republican Party, they've taken turns running this country for, what, since 1850-something, uh, when the Republican Party started, I think, 1854, somewhere in there. And them and the Democrats have taken turns ever since. So we're asking the people that created the problems to solve the problem. How does that work? <laughs> you know, that's not going to work. And people, you know, everyone needs, if you're eligible to vote, you need to vote. You can't just depend on other people. And, you know, only 35% of the people voted in the last, in the primary that were eligible need a higher percentage of that, and there will be in the general election, but you need to get out and you need to study the candidates. And Kurt Schrader, he's part of the problem. <laughs> you know, whatever he wanted, you know, you know, he voted for all these things. He voted for Obamacare. Well, he worked in the state government setting up yeah. the Oregon state government for all these social, social intrusion programs. Um, you know, Nazi Germany did the same thing prior to you know, Hitler's big takeover, using the brown shirts. So, um, you know, taking, taking kids from their families or just uh, using the overpowering of government uh, in an abusive manner is, is coming back. And we see that with the IRS. We see that, how they're targeting the, them, the Tea Party. We see that in uh, how the government's targeting that guy down in uh, I guess it was, what? Uh, Nevada? Nevada with his cows. And yeah. He's using the forest land for, or BLM land for a long time. And they want to bring in SWAT teams and, <laughs> and you know, have uh, uh, Ruby Ridge all over again. Um, I think it's important for the people to understand that we can't have a, a cowboy shoot 'em up type revolution. We have revolutionists of the communist kind in the White House and in, in D.C. We need to replace them with constitutionalists that will protect our sovereign rights and protect the rights of our children for the future. Uh, we are the light of freedom under the world. We uh, don't go around chopping people's heads off because they don't think like we do. So that makes us a little more sophisticated, okay? and. Uh, I, I would prove I, I would choose that sophistication over the blood force that, uh, that is out there. But nonetheless, we have to deal with these forces. And people who kill without reason cannot be reasoned with. And the government keeps pushing people, and the BLM the SWAT team wasn't the only people armed down there. <laughs> Well, I realize that, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I would be the first to say that we need to keep our heads in these matters, and we don't need to get, bring out the guns, uh, even with the government, the sheriff doesn't need to bring them out, we don't need to bring them out. And the reason we don't need to bring them out is because we can't afford to have 
a bloody revolution. Because if we did, fr frankly, um, it, it would divide our country and allow other people to destroy us even easier. There's always been an undertow to our government. There's always been an undertow to freedom and, and, and to the light and to truth. There always has been since the beginning of time. Yeah. And uh, it's, but right now we're in a, a very uh, particular period of time where we need to stand our ground and we need to stand for what we believe in. And, uh, and we cannot afford a bloody revolution because we already got the National Securities Act of 1950 on the books. We didn't need the Patriot Act. National Securities Act 1950 says anyone who they think might possibly commit an act of sabotage can be held in the place of detention without parole or without release until they, they've uh, been to a tribunal of three people and even then they have to prove why they would not commit an act of sabotage. They do not have to prove why they would. So that's been on the books since 1950. This country cannot afford to have a revolution because then they just going to martial law. That suspends the Constitution. And thank you very much, but we don't need that. We need to fight this like we're doing it now with words and with our deeds, but waking up our, our neighbors. Okay, wake up, America. Wake up because the enemy is at the door. And if we don't take steps now, if you don't take steps in your individual homes, to supply yourselves with food and guns and ammunition, then you're not going to be protected and you're not going to eat. Because if you think the government's going to come to your uh, relief, think again. Because this time it's on you. And if you think with that and you be prepared and you have the Boy Scout motto, be prepared in your brain, and you do that, well then you're going to, you and your family are going to be a lot better off than those who didn't. Because the trouble's coming hard and fast. And, you know, Speaking of uh, the Bundy problem, you know, with BLM, mm -hmm. the United States government, quote, owns, unquote, 54 percent of Oregon. Uh, Should they? The nation, almost. Yeah. Especially west of the Rockies. Yeah. I mean, at one time they owned most of the country, but mo a lot of the eastern states got their land back. Mm -hmm. But they haven't given their land back to the western states. Uh, would you be in favor of returning most, if not all, of that federal land to the state? Would yes, I would. I would. I, I think that the state should be operating that land, just like I think that we should have local control over our forests, and uh, we should have local control over our schools. And we should, uh, you know, we need more people involvement. We need more citizen involvement in government. Not less, and as you know, any government meeting you go to, pretty much, uh, they don't want to hear what you have to say, and they just assume you weren't there because you're just going to make the meeting last longer. Because they're going to still do what they're going to do, regardless of what you have to say. But you still have to be there and say it, because if you're not, then they go, well, there's no opposition, there's no other choice, so this is what we're going to do. All of us need to take a more active role in our government and uh, in our schools and those things that control us and our children and our future. You know, and we talked in the last program about Common Core now, which is a, basically a data gathering entity and it's designed to turn our children into slaves of the multinational corporations and to the government. Should the federal government be involved in education? If you're a congressman. Uh, if I was if I was elected uh, to Congress, uh, I would be amongst several other people who would support a bill to abolish the Federal Department of Education as an overseer because it is, uh, uh, number one, it's giving us uh, the rules from the top down instead of allowing uh, local control. Uh, one of the things that uh, my Republican opponent, I've heard, uh, voted for uh, state control over local control in education matters. Uh, that's deadly. Uh, whenever you take away the control from the local level, then you're asking for more tyranny. Yeah. And um, as far as the Department of Education is concerned, having any kind of a collection of information on us, uh, I think that's just be totally forbidden. However, I don't know what they can collect that the NSA hasn't already collected. Um, 
you know, H.J. Wells really um, fell short of the mark. Uh, he didn't, you know, he didn't really see <laughs> that it was much worse than what he ever anticipated in his book it would be. So we are all uh, being processed, analyzed, categorized with dossiers so that when it comes time, they know where to put us. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we need to do to uh, bring the NSA back under control. And, of course, you know, they, every time they get before Congress, they lie and they get away with it. So uh, one thing that I hope to develop um, after I'm elected and even before, well, even if I'm not elected, is the same kind of thing that Nader's Raiders were where he had a group of students that would go out and they would find these problems and, and work them out to make us a better country and, and to solve some of these problems. Uh, it's a consorted effort. One person can't do it. Um, there's a lot of young people nowadays with a lot of good ideas and a lot of intelligence. But uh, you know, they, haven't got, uh, uh, they haven't got a piece of the action. And uh, I hear it said that they, they, this generation is more willing they, they want access. They're not so interested in ownership as they are access. So basically, they've given up on ownership. And, you know, as well as I do, that ownership uh, is one part of freedom. If you don't have natural resources, uh, you don't have assets, then you can't truly be free. It's because if you have those, you can rely on those to carry you when you like when you're doing things that need to be done. American people were not meant to be slaves and poor. They were meant no. to be rich, all of us. That's the way it was set up, and it was set up so that we could all have access mm -hmm. to everything. And we'd gotten away from that and all into the hands of the government and uh, the international bankers. We've got 45 seconds. Say, tell people why they should vote for you. <laughs> well, they should vote for me because I'm like them. Yeah. They should vote for me because I'm a guy uh, who just wants to take care of the children, make sure that they're safe. I don't want, uh, I don't want any Arab forces coming over here <laughs> trying to push their Sharia law so that they can cut off the heads of everybody that's not. No, no, I'm not going to let it get that far. I'm not going to get it here. I'm a fighter and I'm gonna fight that. I'm gonna fight all of these problems and I'm gonna fight for the Constitution of the United States. Thank you. And um, I hope you'll tell your neighbors to watch this program too and get out and vote. And vote for Raymond Baldwin for US Congress, 5th District. Thank you and good night. <laughs>